Gentlemen, what's going on with St. Augustine's football program? Um, this isn't necessarily a, a school that you hear about every day, even in HBCU circles. But for whatever reason, when St. Augustine does make the news, and I don't say this to be crash, I don't uh, to, to be crass, I don't say this to be uh, just be mean. But for whatever reasons, it they don't make headlines for good reasons. Um, they you know the last time they made kind of like national headlines is when they fired their Hall of Fame track coach. And then, you know, the uh, football uh, coach who who's in the middle of his first year, six games in, is fired. So, uh, Chris, I'll, I'll let you uh, take the lead on this. Make sense of this. What's, what's going on with the program? Whew. Well... Once again, now um, Brandon deserves the, the ton of credit for uh, finding that um, fi- um, for, for doing the reporting on that. So just to um, piggyback off of his story, um, Howard Feggins, they said that he 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 openly admitted honestly that he played an ineligible player three snaps when they were getting their doors blown off by Virginia State earlier this um, season, and then another young man said that he had a, um, a number of a ineligible player. That, but they just kept putting an ineligible player's name in as the stat. So he was ended up being reported as the ineligible player when he was not the ineligible player. So uh, Coach Feggins uh, had a press conference saying that he had no support because uh, St. Augs does not have an SID. They don't even have an FLA trainer. They were practicing on concrete, which do, which doesn't which only helps if you were still playing at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia in the 1980s. That's about the scope of it. So and they're not playing in they're not playing at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia in the 1980s. So it just feels like, and this is just my state, my, my state of you know smaller HBCUs address. You can only get out what you put into something. Like you can look at, and we'll talk about these two programs in a minute because they had two big victories in the SIAC this weekend. Right. Um, talk about Allen and Edward Waters in the SIAC two. Faith-based institutions, mind you, because St. August, Augustine's, excuse me, I almost said St. Augustine. Right, no, yep, yep. I don't want to disrespect the late, great Mr. Eric Moore. Um, St. Augustine's. So we know that uh, St. Augustine's is a faith-based institution. Edward Waters is an AME institution. I believe Allen is UMC, um, United Meth- United African Methodist. I could be wrong. You know, someone will correct me on that if they're watching this. But either way, faith-based institutions that both of those schools have put solid, you know, backing behind their athletic mm-hmm. programs as a whole and look at the football teams the football teams are right now three and f- um, three and four if i'm not mistaken in the siac so you have to care you have to care about the health of your athletic programs if you want these kids to keep coming to your institutions because um going back to your earlier point ken about you know hbcu culture and how it goes sports are you know it's a, a social thing for us mm-hmm. yes we go to the games you know to cheer on our classmates or our, you know, students or whatever, but people still want to go to have a good time, even if you are not the best, but if you are winning and you, you know, that gives you something to talk about. St. Augustine's hasn't been good and God knows how long. So, you know, for them to, you know, just keep being in the headlines for foolishness, like firing a Hall of Fame track coach, who who the building is named after, the stadium is named <laughs> after George Williams, we're crying out exactly. loud. And you get rid of the guy who's led you to like, what is it, 30, 32? I NCAA lost Division II championship. A lot. It's, it's a ton of them, basically. Yeah. And you're getting yeah. rid of this gentleman, and now you're back in the news because you can't keep a football coach. Who's in charge over there? Yeah. That's really yeah. what it boils down to. Who's in yeah. charge over there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh but Chris pointed it out, Brandon. You you kind of reported on this. What 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 are your thoughts about the situation over at St. Augustine? I have <laughs> I don't know if I've seen anything like this. Uh in, in terms of recent memory um, in, in sports to see, well, first of all, the fact that seven months and six games into the tenure, you, you just break your coach off like that the day before the game, by yeah. the way, which, yeah, yeah. Which <laughs> right. <laughs> Jared is shaking his head like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the day before. And, and, you know, even the fact that, that you know, from, from what came out of the press conference, uh, I'll say allegedly. Which, that wait, they which didn't, one? The one that Coach Coaches? Fagan's had. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, they, I, St. Aug didn't have a press conference, but they did. They, they issued a press, yeah. they, they issued a statement. But, so, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Let me thank you for, for correcting that, you know, you're, you're saying that the, 
one the 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 students of the student athletes didn't have food or enough food to eat you know they're out there on a concrete field and you don't have sids and you don't have the part of a critical infrastructure to run a football program that speaks volumes that if if it is that bad how serious are you about playing football yeah yeah. As a matter of fact, one one of our viewers uh, d- d- watches Jay B- J Blue says SA- SAU might as well shut the whole athletic program down if they can't get ice detergent for Washington, Washington and, and practicing in the parking lot. <laughs> uh, uh, Jared, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> There's so we we talked about there being layers to the Tennessee State story. This yeah. might have double that. This might have. Okay, so let's start from the coach knows that the player is ineligible, but he plays him anyway. Mm. A, 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 am I right about that? I just want to yeah. make sure I'm not. Yeah, he he, he kind of alluded to it without directly just saying it, but yeah, he he did definitely allude that he knew about that player. Okay, so we'll say allegedly he knew that the player was ineligible and played him anyway. Now, to to get the serious point in there, what if that player gets hurt? What if he gets injured? What if he tears an ACL? What if he tears an Achilles? What if he sprains, uh, even if he sprains an ankle and he needs medical treatment? What are you going to tell his family? You because you can't you can't use your insurance to to cover right. his yeah. treatment. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't. He, Apparently he's not on scholarship, so he can't you he can't use his money out of pocket or money from wherever to pay for treatment. That was just utterly irresponsible. Before we get to any of the issues that he laid out, that is no excuse for what you did. So acknowledge that you were wrong, which you did, fair. Acknowledge that you were wrong and say I did something that was to to them unforgivable. Okay, got that out the way. Now, Saint Aug or Saint Augustine. We call you Saint Aug. I ain't never called you Saint Augustine a day in my life. But anyway, Saint Saint, Saint Aug is safe, but it is Saint Augustine. I'm just for yeah. for those that don't know, because there are a lot of people out there who say Saint Augustine is Saint Augustine, but Saint Aug is safe, so you're good. Yeah, we are, we, are, we I've always called him Saint Aug. Okay, so St. Aug, guys, I get it. He was wrong. And I'm not about to sit here and tell you whether or not what he did was a fireable offense. I'm not here to say that. But, guys, it's the day before the game. (laughs) It's the day. Like, you let that man go through six weeks, six days of practices, walkthroughs, film sessions, and game planning saying oh yeah we're gonna run this play we're gonna run this play we're gonna do this hey coach i need you to to coach up your guys i need you to do all this and then the day before the game hey coach i need to talk to you for a second can i talk to you for a second coach we're gonna have to let you go the the day before the day before like like (laughs) at that point you might as well have just let him coach that game and then gave him his papers on monday now, whether or not we believe that that was a fireable offense or if something he should have just got fined for and moved on, because he was in set six games with uh, within the season. But I, I will say, I will say this: through all the throughout all the problems that St. Augustine is going through, it, we we talk a lot about the struggles that HBCUs go through, especially the smaller ones. You know, the the D two NAI schools. You know what I mean? This is all about we keep going back to the lack of support from, and I'm not sure if 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 St. Aug is a is a private or if they're a public, but the the lack of support they're that are they're private. Okay, so the lack of su- support that these institutions are getting, you know, that are putting them in situations where now look, when, even with saying that, practicing in the parking lot is crazy, but but. It's still, it's like, 
you know, we, we have to support our schools and understand that they go through hard times and that there are going to be situations where we have to lean on them more than we lean off of them. You know what I mean? So it's, it's all about giving support the same way we gave support to Bethune Cookman when they went through what they went through during the off season. We have to do the same thing for St. Off because at the end of the day, it's all about wanting better for our institutions. And right now, this is a St. Aug team that looks like there's no light at the end of the tunnel for forget their football team, their athletic program in general. This is a team that has won two football games in the last three seasons. Okay, so Jerry, let me let me let me push back on you because you say that. But at what point do alums of St. Aug want better for the football program? Because you're saying we all do. And you use and, and you talked about Bethune Cookman, and there was nothing there was nothing indicative about that situation that I saw where alums didn't necessarily want. Now, it, 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 in and even in situations like that, there are layers because sometimes alums don't know, sometimes alums don't take the time to want to know. Uh, so you know, th- there's a lot to it. But but going to the Saint Aug situation, I mean, doesn't it start with them first and foremost? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. This is about, you know, and I and I don't want to make I don't want to make it seem like St. Og's issues are issues that you see at HBCUs every day. This is rare. Right. This, right. this is as when you look at the dictionary and you see the word rare, this situation yeah. in, is the definition. So I don't I don't. So, yes, it, it does. I, I feel like alums, students, they have to have a town hall. Uh, we need to have all the athletes, all the coaching staffs. They all need to get in the room, and they and these athletic directors need to get in there, and and they need to have a talk with these with these athletes and these coaches, and they need to they need to lay lay out a a, a goal for making lay out a plan to make things better for their programs. Right. You know, and I don't know what, what the situation is like for the other sports, but but. I, we because because this this is this is something that cannot continue. It, it this is something that you know permeates. So yeah, yeah. I feel like they need to address this as sooner rather than later. Yeah, one of the people viewing right now is Edwin Morris, my man, and he made a, a, a hell of a point. He, he, he's saying I don't like making Saint Aug issues HBCU issues. That's simply trash. That's simply trash administration. And I believe yeah. there's something to that because. Um, we we we're, we're I'm going to get into this not not doing this this show, but we've we've highlighted this because there is something to be said for institutions. And, and let's face it, you know, we sports are important, whether it be Division three, Division two, II, Division one, even at the Ivy League level. Sports is important. And I think for the most part, many of these institutions simply provide that sports component, regardless of of the, um, and, and I tell people what the overall reason. So yeah, uh, sports is a business at the college level, but keep in mind, college is a business as well. So I, I, I think what one of the, the, the obstacles that makes a particular school, regardless of what it is that you're looking for in the school, is some people may say, you know what, I'm just looking for a, I'm, I'm just looking for a, 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 a traditional college experience. I wanna go to a college, I want to interact with, with people with similar minds or, or different people. And then at the same time, you know, I want to be able to go to football games on Saturdays and go to basketball games and sporting events there and so forth and just take it all in. And that's done at, like I said, Division Three, Division Two, Division One. But with respect to Edwin's comments about not making St. Aug's issue an HBCU issue, which it isn't, and I'll give you a quick example. This is where I'm going with this, because you have some HBCUs who will realize, OK, we've got this athletic component here and it's not working for us. So, you know what? We're going to do away with it. So pr- perfect example is Stillman. Stillman was a member of the SIAC, was a football playing member of the SIAC. And it got to the point to where sports became too, too expensive. It, it, it became too much for them to handle. So as a result, they got rid of football. 
Uh, another one. Spelman is another one. Remember, Spelman had an athletic program for, for, for the women, but they decided, you know what? It's too much money for athletics. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take those dollars and we're going to, I believe it was um, in wellness, health and wellness. And, 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 and they did away with that, but they still kept the, 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 uh, the, you know, the, the, the physical component there for, uh, for the, for the overall um, wellness of the students. And in the case of Stillman, they left the SIAC and they just became a member of the GCAC, which means they left the NCAA to, come, to become a member of the NAIA, which I'm guessing is probably a more affordable component, but at the same time still gives their student athletes an athletic vehicle that many of them can, can still participate in. That's being responsible. You know, so great point, Edwin. It, 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 it's not always an HBCU issue. It's just that, unfortunately, a lot of our HBCUs, you know, I, I put it like this and, 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 I'll, uh, and we'll go on to, to the recaps. I've, you hear people jokingly or even in some cases, they're serious about it, saying that some of these schools need to be Division Two. And I'm here to tell you right now, I don't care how big you are. <laughs> I don't care how much money you make. Or, or, or the schools may be generating. You can make a case for every single institution that plays in either the MEAC or the SWAC. And I'm dead serious about this. You can make a case for every single school to move down to Division II because of the things that they are going through right now. Because whether it be FAMU, whether it be Howard, whether it be J-State, whether, whether they can be the largest HBCUs that we have, they drop the ball in some area, in some form or fashion, whether it be athletically, whether it be administratively in the athletic circles, you can make a case. And a lot of it always goes back to funding. You know, and it's the, it, and a lot of it is the stuff that's not sexy, the things that you can't see where a lot of these schools struggle. So, you know, for all of you who make those jokes, because I hear and I'm just and I'm not trying to pick up because a lot of people say all the time, Mississippi, Mississippi Valley needs to go to Division Two. And the very people who are making these comments represent schools that the same case can be made for the schools that they attend. Every every single school right now competing at the, at the FCS level, there's a case that can be made for why you should go down to Division II. And I'll leave it at that. So, gentlemen, sorry, I, I didn't want to get on the soapbox. But like I said, I don't want to make this a, a, a an HBCU issue. And I'm not trying to pick it on St. Aug. But my point is, is that all HBCUs don't operate the same way.